Good evening, Northern Hills United Methodist Church, and welcome to WOW, Worship on Wednesday. My name is Herschel Krigbaum, and I'm a lay servant here at the church. And as always, we are super excited that you're joining us on this Wednesday so that you may, may be able to uh, recharge your spiritual batteries. Uh, we had Thanksgiving last week, so hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start a series on Advent. We're going to have three messages, and those messages are coming from the pastors, and it's always a treat when we get to hear our pastors uh, speak to us. As always, we want to hear your prayer requests and your praise reports here at the church. If you feel comfortable where you are right now, go ahead and say a, a prayer request out loud. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and say a praise out loud. Remember to send those to prayer at nhumc.org so we can lift those up uh, on our Tuesday morning prayer meeting time. If you had a prayer request, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. If you had a praise report, Lord, we give you praise. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Glorious and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time. We give you thanks for this season of Advent. As we move closer to the birth of Jesus Christ, we just all celebrate and rejoice in that. And as we move forward, I just pray all of us are able to take our burdens that we have and lay those at the feet of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. May your Holy Spirit be with Pastor Patrick tonight as he delivers the message. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening and welcome to WOW and glad you can join us. So tonight we're talking about Emmanuel, uh, which means God with us. And this is one of the fundamental things of the Christian faith. If you really think about it, this idea that we don't have to reach some level of where God is for God to accept us. On the contrary, God reaches out to us. God meets us on our own terms where we are and doesn't leave us there. God redeems us. But the idea is it's a, we serve and love a God who doesn't expect us to reach some standard before he works with us. God comes where we are, and that is what we celebrate in this Christmas season when we talk about Emmanuel. So, this uh, first song is a bit of a blast from the past. This is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. 
the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and terror pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Hey, 
Happy Advent. Uh, we're so excited about this sermon series uh, for WOW uh, coming forward in the next three weeks. It's going to be me and the other pastors talking to you about themes of Advent um, or, or kind of names of God in that Advent series, but not ad- connected with our Advent series uh, on Sunday. And so today I'm talking to you about the, the name Emmanuel. Um, and I, I know that people will pronounce it differently. Some say Emmanuel and some say Emmanuel. Um, and so I'm going to say it probably different ways as I talk to you today. But let's just talk about what that means. Emmanuel literally translates to mean God with us, right? It, it, that's just it, God with us. And so we think, okay, well, God with us. Well, it's something that we take for granted that says, okay, God is with us. God is here. God is around. Uh, we discussed God's omnipresence before, that he is everywhere. But I think the the term Emmanuel has a much more significant meaning. It definitely has a really strong meaning, both today and when Jesus was alive and in the early church. Now let's discuss what that means. Um, Is in in the early church, uh, and the term Emmanuel actually uh, mostly comes from the Old Testament, particularly in Isaiah. Uh, It is also mentioned in in Matthew, uh, where basically his name is Emmanuel. Uh, That's early Matthew, Matthew 123, um, meaning God with us. But the significance of that is really big, right? Because we know that the Israelite people at many times uh, throughout the history of the Old Testament felt that the that God had abandoned them or at least was allowing them to be punished for their sins and transgressions. So after you had the, the loss of the monarchy, right? After uh, the, the monarchy kind of faded and uh, then there was a series of oppressors. Uh, now, a lot of this happens in the 400 years of silence. The 400 years of silence is when... There was no real contact from God to the Israelites before Jesus came, right? Uh, The last thing we know about is kind of like the exile of the Babylon and the Babylonians and return. Uh, And then we have 400 years of silence until we have the rumblings for John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus, God with us. Uh, But a lot happened in that time. So in their history, the Israelites have been conquered uh, or at least slaves in Egypt They were conquered uh, by the Assyrians, the Babylonians. Um, They were conquered by the the Greeks. They were conquered by the Persians. They were conquered by the Romans. Uh, And then the Romans um, set up kind of a a puppet king of Israel as well. So let's just talk a lot about that. Um, There was a a group of Romans, uh, actually uh, former Ptolemies, who uh, kind of wanted to control the Israelites. And in fact, they wanted to, to make sure that the Israelites uh, basically did not have a culture anymore. And they knew that the religious aspect of the Israelite culture um, was a significant portion of their history. So one man in particular who was just kind of known uh, to be really bad was Antiochus IV of Epiphanes. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Now, uh, his goal was to increase his power by destroying the culture of the Israelites. And so what he did was come in and he attacked their religion. He attacked the temple. He made it so that the priest could not be clean. There is rumors even that he forced the priest to eat pigs um, on pain of death so that they would be unclean, uh, so that they could no longer worship. But his goal was power. And his goal was to make sure that they could not meet and interact with their God at the time. Of course, right after this, uh, the the Romans kind of took over and they set up this puppet king of the the Herods. Uh, One, of course, was the Herod uh, that ordered the boys under two-year-olds to basically be slain because uh, he feared for his own power that the new king, the new Messiah, was going to to be born, which is interesting. If he believed in the Messiah, he had to have believed in the God who was going to be behind the Messiah, but he desired power more than that. I always just thought that was really interesting. But what the Israelites felt is that their God had abandoned them, that that God was so upset with them that he had not shown up. Now, there was some times where they came in and, and rescued themselves. There was the Maccabean revolt, which is really kind of cool. Um, and That's not in our scriptures, but at the same time, it always... Whenever they succeeded, 
someone else would come in and conquer them again. So they felt that God had abandoned them. So the idea that Emmanuel, God with us, is the name or one of the names of Jesus is really significant. Now, what does that mean? Uh, like one time, like Eugene Peterson in the message uh, says it like this. It's not like God, Jesus just came and was hanging out with us. It was more like Jesus came and, and Jesus came and moved into the neighborhood. Does that make sense? Like he came and he, and he stuck. Because we know that Jesus didn't just hang out in the nice neighborhoods, in the nice restaurants, in the nice synagogues. He came and hung out with the people and, and where they were at. And so God with us, Jesus with us is significant. He didn't just come and chill. He didn't just stay for a season. He came to live. He came to stay. And it's really big to me to know that a God or our God came to stay with us. It, it means a couple of things. One, it means that he understands our predicament. And I know that whenever I turn on the news, whenever I look outside, whenever I turn on the, the radio and there's a new broadcast, doom and gloom is all that's out there. Oh, this is happening and this is happening. And this is going to happen. And we're worried about this. Well, it's always a comfort to me that I know that God is not only here and listening, but he's also, I believe, here and can experience. He experienced everything that I feel. Moreover, he's stuck for the bad things. You know, there's something about a God that suffers. Our religion, our faith, is, is the only time that we have a God who chose to suffer with his people. Other uh, false religions and myths always have the gods refusing to suffer and making humans suffer in their place. I can think of a, a few stories in Greek, uh, Roman, and Norse mythology where humans suffered for their God. We're the only ones who believe that God came and suffered for us, which is interesting. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's like for some reason that God said, you know what? I'm not going to let my people suffer. I'm going to suffer next to them. I'm not going to wave a magic wand and just make all that's bad disappear. I'm going to walk with them. I'm going to absorb that with them. It reminds me of how I can be with my children. My son Parker is 11. He's on that cusp of the, the crazy middle teenage years. And I know that I can't solve problems for him, but if I do, it's not going to make him the person he needs to be. But my role is to suffer with him, to walk through things. I actually worked at a camp one time, and uh, the policy was is if you had to punish a child for something that they did at camp, uh, like you know, you had to sweep out the gym or you had to clean the pool area or something like that, that you could, you could punish them, but you had to do it with them. And it was, it was a twofold purpose. One, it kept the punishments from increasing throughout the week because the staff didn't want to do it. But two, it communicated strongly to uh, the camper, hey, I'm here with you. And when you do something, I care enough about you that I'm going to be right here taking the punishment for you and with you. It's a great thought about who Jesus is, and that's what God is. is we have a God who has chosen to suffering, and a suffering God speaks so much more than God's power or than God's uh, knowledge or his deity. Now, we have a God who chose to suffer with us. So what does that mean to us? What's well, how we live? It's how we choose to live how we approach our life in response to Emmanuel, God with us. That God chose to, to move into our neighborhoods, to live into these things. And so we say, okay, God's with us. So we hold that promise. And we say, God, you know what? I'm going to sometimes choose to, to suffer for others. I'm going to sometimes choose to put myself in the situation where I'm not certain what's going on. Because I know that by being present with others, when bad things are happening or doing the thing that makes me uncomfortable might be the ministry that I need to do. And knowing that this world has suffering in it. And that's a long drawn out story about why suffering happens in this present place. I believe it's there for a reason. 
But moreover, I believe that Jesus said, hey, I'm going to stand next to you. I'm going to stand next to you in the good times. I'm going to stand next to you in the bad times. And I'm going to sit there and absorb your suffering with you. And in the end, I'm going to absorb the suffering that you can't withstand. So in the end, we can go to a place that neither of us is suffering for all eternity. I don't know exactly what heaven looks like. I have some thoughts, but it's not backed by too much research. I can tell you this. I'd much rather be there with a God who chose to suffer with me than a God who chose to let me suffer so that he could sit in luxury. And so today, when I say the words Emmanuel, God with us, I'm not just saying good times. I mean, Jesus moved into the neighborhood, the tough, rumbly neighborhood that we grew up in, and he's stuck, and he's still there. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for the beginning of this series and for the idea that you are God with us. You are Emmanuel, the God who sticks, the God who suffers, the God who moved in. Lord, help us remember that there's something special about you because you are the God who chose to suffer with us. And that also means there's something special about us that you chose to suffer. And though sometimes we can't see you, and it's sometimes tough to feel your presence, that you're there. Lord, thank you so much. Help us remember you this holiday season. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, y'all. The message about Jesus as our Emmanuel is a message of hope. And uh, as we learn about in the Old Testament, you know, the prophets foretold of Jesus' coming and that idea of the Emmanuel God with us, that good news, that was something that was hoped for in the Old Testament times, and it's something that we continue to hope for as we look to Christ's return, that at the end of the day, Jesus is God with us. As the song says, uh, in ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. How much does that describe our world today? How much are you and I in need of that healing touch of our Emmanuel? So think about that as we sing this together. This is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile.
Thank you, Pastor Patrick, for that great message that you delivered to us this evening. Remember, we have a lot of stuff going on here at Northern Hills. So what we want you to do or what we would like you to do is check out our website. And remember to check out our media pages. We have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and also our website at nhumc.org. That way you can find out all the stuff that's going on during the week here at Northern Hills and in the future. If you look at the calendar for the church, you'll see all the events that are scheduled coming up for the rest of the year. So thank you, Pastor Patrick, for that message. Remember to check out our social media and our church website, and please join me for this benediction. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for everything that you do in our lives. Thank you for this evening. Thank you that we can come to you in our time of need or during the middle of the week just to recharge our spiritual batteries. May we all go in peace and be safe until we meet again. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, everybody.